Okay, in this video we are going to talk about turning limits of Riemann sums into definite integrals, or the relationship between those two. Um, and so, I'm really going to be focused on AP calculus, because that's what I teach and that's what my students take. Um, and in that course, pretty much every time you run into this, uh, you're only dealing with right Riemann sums. And so we're going to break down what that really looks like, um, and then do a couple of examples. So, uh, we're going to start with this picture. So we have f of x. And then we want to uh, have a definite integral, so we need bounds for that. So we have a here and b here. And what we're going to do is um, calculate a delta x, right? Which is the it's uh, even slices between a and b. So we take the distance between a and b, which is b minus a, and cut it up into n equal pieces, and we call that delta x. Um, make some rectangles. So I'm making right rectangles here. Um, and each of these has a width of delta x. So we go all the way through there. And then uh, we're really concerned with what the right endpoint of each base is. So here it would be a plus delta x. And then here we would have a plus 2 times delta x. And then um, you get all the way to the end. And you have a plus, you've used delta x n times to get there. And um, so that is actually going to be what I call an evaluation point. So it's x sub i um, is going to be just a where you start plus i times delta x. So if you're on the twelfth rectangle, it would be a plus twelve times delta x. And when we're looking at this, um, we take these and we plug them in. And so that point up there is a plus delta x comma f of a plus delta x. So the heights of the rectangles you find by plugging in all of these evaluation points. So this point right here is going to be f of a plus 2 times delta x. And then when you finally get all the way to the end, um, that point right there is going to be f of, it's really f of b, but it's f of a plus n times delta x. Okay, so uh, the idea here is that we can use our x sub i, which we've worked out, to figure out what a and b are. So we're kind of like working backwards now. So if you plug 0 into the formula for x sub i, everywhere you see an i replace it with 0, you get a plus 0 times delta x, so you just get a. If you plug in n, um, as we already know, you're going to get b. But the reason you get b is you have a plus i times, or rather n times b minus a over n. The n's cancel. a plus b minus a is just b. Uh, so if you can figure out the evaluation point, you can use that to figure out what a and b are, which is a really big idea here. And then each of the rectangles has an area that we can find. Um, and the area is just base times height. And that works out to the bases are all delta x. And then the heights are f of your evaluation point. And that means that we can uh, write our definite integral. OK, so it's going to be the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to, so it's the limit as n approaches infinity of um, all of the rectangles have a base of delta x. We can factor that out of all of them. So I'm going to delta x times, and then the first height is f of a plus delta x. And the second height is f of a plus 2 times delta x. And then you just keep going until you finally get to f of a plus n times delta x. OK, so this is a big deal because this is what uh, you're either going to have the left-hand side or the right-hand side, and you're going to want to figure out the other side. So now we're going to do uh, three examples. So the first one looks like this. So when I do these problems, the first thing I do is I look for delta x. And it's usually just kind of sitting here. It's either at the front or it's at the end. Um, so that's delta x. So delta x is 1 over n, which means that um, I can kind of look and figure out what the function is. It looks like I'm plugging things into just, uh, to me, radical x. So if I look at this and I think I'm plugging stuff into radical x, then that means I can figure out what my x of the i's are by looking at what's plugged in. So uh, if I go through and box them for you. So we have 1 plus 1 over n, 1 plus 2 over n, and all the way up to 1 plus n over n. So it looks to me like x sub i is 1 plus i times my delta x, which is 1 over n. And once I know that, I can use that to figure out what a and b are. So if I plug, a is going to be x sub 0, which is 1 plus 0 times 1 over n, so just 1. And then b is going to be x sub n, which is going to be 1 plus 
uh, n over n, which is 2. So I can say that the integral is the integral from 1 to 2 of radical x dx. But uh, these aren't unique. There's more than one way to think about this. So maybe you look at it, delta x is going to be the same. But maybe your initial impulse is to say that f of x is radical 1 plus x, which is kind of reasonable. And if you say that, then if you look, now you're plugging in something different. So I'm going to go through and box what you're plugging in this time. Uh, you're plugging in 1 over n, and then 2 over n, and then n all the way down to n over n. So our x sub i changes when we choose a different function. So here x sub i is actually just going to be i over n, or i times 1 over n. So here, if we let um, i equal 0, we get just 0. If we let i equal n, find x sub n, that'll tell us what b is. That's n times 1 over n, which is 1. So now our integral becomes the integral from 0 to 1 of radical 1 plus x dx. These have the same numerical value, so they're equivalent. Both of them are valid ways of writing this. Um, and if this was multiple choice, you would just have to decide which one. It's, it's important to realize if you do u substitution on the bottom one, it just turns into the top one. And that actually pretty much always happens when you do these. Let's take a look at another one. So uh, this one, if you get the hang of it, kind of jumps out right away. So here's my delta x. I'm thinking the function is definitely sine of x. And then my x sub i's, we're plugging in pi over n, 2 pi over n, all the way to n times pi over n. So x sub i looks like it's going to be um, i times pi over n. So that's i times delta x. Uh, plug in 0 for i and we get 0. Plug in n for i, and we get just pi. So work that out, get just pi, um, which means our integral is the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x dx. So once you get used to it, these aren't really that bad. So we're going to do one more that's actually a little bit different. So instead of being given um, the, instead of being given the, the limit, instead of being given the uh, the definite integral, we're just given a graph, and we're told that we need to uh, uh, figure this out. So the function is given, so f of x is definitely uh, the cube root of x. And then I'm definitely going from negative 1 to 3. So I'm writing uh, the limit of a Riemann sum that would give me the uh, definite integral shown below the shaded region. Um, so here my delta x is going to be uh, 3 minus negative 1 and then over n, so that's going to be 4 over n. My x sub i is always going to be a, where I'm starting, so negative 1, plus i times delta x. So i and then 4 over n. Um, and then I can write the limit of the Riemann sum this time. So it's limit as n approaches infinity, so I'm going to put delta x, and then uh, parentheses, and then the heights of all the rectangles are the f it's f of my x of i, so it's f of, and then if I let i equal 1, I get this, plus f of, if I let i equal 2, I would get this, and then I'm going to do plus dot dot dot, plus um, I want the nth term, so the cube root of negative 1 plus n times 4 over n, and then close that, and then I know that the definite integral this represents is the integral from negative 1, 2, 3 of the cube root of x dx. Okay, so that's like a different approach, but it's not really any harder. You just really have to know what you're doing in terms of figuring out what f of x is, figuring out a and b, knowing the relationship between delta x and um, the evaluation points, just kind of going from there. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.